He sold drugs. He killed people. As a job at McDonald's, this is my job. This is what I do. Um, Paul Hardy was out of, um, I think it was the Florida Project, the Hardy Boys. And um, as I've learned over the years, um, he was a drug lord. That was his role. The Hardy Boys was originally from uptown. They came um, downtown in the Desire Projects and um, just from surface information, you know, kind of took over the Desire. So they wasn't nothing to really be played with. The best hitmen at that time. Wasn't they out the Cali originally? If I'm not mistaken, um, I, I I don't know exactly what project, but I know that they was from Uptown. They was yeah. originally from Uptown. By us being from downtown, we didn't have like the Uptown legends like your uh, Glen Metz and mm -hmm. um, um, your Meatballs and all of them. One thing I can say about Cross the Canal, um, especially back then in the 90s, and I know everywhere else really in a city was similar to this, but it was a real village down there. Everybody for the you most part. You said down there, what part of the city is that? Across the canal. Across the canal. What, what water is that? The Lower Night Water. Lower Night Water. Okay. Across the canal was a family. Like I said, it was a real Yeah, village. it was brought up as family. So they distinct because of the uniqueness. Because there's two projects that represent the Night Water, right? The, the flood and the design. Yeah. So yeah. once you come down Portland and cross the bridge, you cross the canal. So. I think it was anybody that was to take a hit how much of an impact my NT was. If it was anybody downtown or uh, uh, around that area, I think they would have probably been like, nah, this family or this is kin through somebody. So to me, um, it would kind of make more sense to get somebody that's not even familiar. When this happened, they were supposed to be out to Florida. Now, they might have descended from the major, you know, you know how you have people move different places and they might have raised them in the Florida Project. But that's where they formed, they part of the Hardy Boys. Paul Hardy had um, a walkie talkie too, a, um, a police radio with him. So um, he, was, he was given basically everything that he needed to really set sail into the sun like like it, it was almost like a given my mom i don't think she knew like of paul hardy i don't think paul knew of her because the the how my mom was well known if paul knew her he wouldn't have went through with it so i i really don't think paul knew her he just was doing his job i actually i told 14 it's paul's birthday so lynn was paying him for a job and hey he go a gift to you Paul Hardy, when he went to court, when he um, got found mentally that he can't get the death penalty, I actually read my letter to him. Just him being in there give me more of a, if he knew now, if he didn't know then what he knew now, I wouldn't think he would have went through with it. But at that time, that's what it was. And that was his job. He got paid for it. And it was a clean slate to them at that moment. Do you think Paul feared Lynn? I mean, hey, in a way I'll say yeah, because I'm a drug lord, you're an officer. You have more power than me. Then you're a notorious officer. So, I mean, if no one else around you safe, <laughs> I'm only safe because of the position I play. Yeah, and then he probably has so much on him as well. You know? Exactly. Right. Exactly. Right. That you know how bias this world is. You get rid of a drug law, hey, you did us a favor. Us not looking into that of why would you get rid of this drug law that you deal with now. So he had a lot of more stakes over his head. Beside Lynn Davis, Paul Hardy and all the other things, Kim Groves was a mother. She had three children, three young children. Corey Groves, Stephanie Groves, and Jasmine Groves. You deprived her from being a mother. She never met her grandchildren. You know, um, that party she was planning for me, she never got to celebrate it. Like this completely flipped our family. She was the mold. So when you figuring out how do a teenage 
boy who feel like he should have protected his mom feel? How do a young teenager who feel like, you know, I'm going into my pre-adulthood now feel? And then you have one who just hit in teenage years, but all that stripped. Would you say this was the first time you ever really got to tell your story? You guys ever really got to? Um, yeah. Okay. The truth. The oh, hearts, that will yeah. yeah. And just telling her truth, like, you know, I've done news interviews and things like that, but like I always have people talking about, they saw them other things yeah. just on TV. It mm -hmm. has nothing to do with us. Yeah. My, Mostly. My Carol called me. And people who are kin to her, it upsets them because they know the truth. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so the stories that you hear, the documentaries that they make and they put out online, is just, it functions. It has nothing to do with us. Okay. At all. That's why I think it had directly from the source. and stuff like that. Okay.